it's a live it's a live and learn process really I'm really happy with our decision to rent an apartment for the first time that we are here because it would be really difficult to live on the boat right now. It's super hot. It's 8 a.m. and I'm already sweating and yeah, the boat is, is just a mess. So, um, I mean, look at that, guys. This is, <laughs> this is not a boat. This is a construction site. This is disgusting. Okay, so today we're gonna start the process slow. First off, we're gonna check the batteries, make sure that they're still working, that they're good. We're gonna plug the boat to shore power. And then what else, Ryan? Uh, then we're gonna start taking the prop off. That's probably gonna be a fun job. I wanted to do some preventative maintenance on the cutlass bearing as the boat is out of the water. The cutlass bearing helps keep our propeller shaft running smooth and straight while propelling our boat through the water. In order to do that, we needed to take the prop off. I need to remove the propeller to get the bearing out and many times you also need to remove the shaft. So my thinking was, if the shaft comes out, we might as well preventatively change the stern seal. Sophie and I have talked for the last two years about changing the engine mounts, again, preventatively. Since the shaft is off, it makes for a prime opportunity to do this. Next, once everything is off, we will clean and polish and inspect the propeller and the shaft, put the new cutlass and stern seals on, reassemble everything, add new anodes, and hopefully a rope cutter. Wheel, wheel, wheel. Sophie, do you see what we need to remove next? Uh, yeah, those three things. Yep, so there's three pins in there. All right. All right. There we go. Oh my god, did you do that? Yeah. Oh, you're so good. Did you push play? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so this is a like a gear puller, but the problem is it's not big enough. Is it not? No. No way. Doing the actual job does not take much time. It's everything around the job that takes forever. Like this. This just is not right. Good morning. This is our second day at the yard. Oh, and it's uh, raining. Good thing that we are working under the bow. So update our really nice neighbor who we found through the Curacao Cruises group on Facebook. Groups are awesome. Has better tools than us. <laughs> so. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my God. <laughs> That was dramatic. It'll come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it might be the key. Oh. The it'll, it'll come there. Try Thanks, again. Jason. I think we'll put it back on. The key's jammed in there. Oh, yeah. I see the key. I wonder if it's loose now, though. You're... Yeah. There we go. Woohoo! Fuck yeah. Yay. High five, Jason. Thanks. <laughs> That was uh Thanks so much. That was the yep. I really thought all was lost today, but that's great. There you go. Woohoo! Such a good feeling. That only took four hours. The next part might take even longer. So. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing, but with uh, a factor minus one thousand accessibility. Yeah. The gearbox is back here. That's where the light is shining, that box, that gray box. And then behind it, where the light is there, is the shaft coupling. That's that piece back there. And we've got to take that off and then that's got to come off the shaft, which is going to be a challenge in this small space. So what we need to do, there's a nut that holds the coupling onto the shaft. We need to get that off first. I'll show you what we're going to do. Sophie's gonna be in the back. She'll probably film most of it, but down here is the cup link. 
there. And inside is a nut. So we're just gonna put the socket on and I'll crank and Sophie will have the pipe wrench and she'll go the, she'll go the other way. Okay. Can I try? Yeah, go ahead. You're gonna need to move. Oh, okay, so that took us a good 25, 30 minutes, but uh, the shaft is off. No. <laughs> the nut, the nut is off. We still have to get the coupling off, which is gonna be the hard part. Hello, and welcome to a new day of uh, trying to remove the stern seal and uh, the coupling from the shaft. It's really hot. It's so hot. I am leaving a romance with this fan and um, Ryan is currently experimenting with a new strategy. It's a bit scary. Okay. Ryan, do you want to tell us what you're trying to do? No, not right now. I want to figure out what I'm doing first. Well, that is very reassuring indeed. And that is how, after days of trying to figure out how to remove the coupling from the shaft in order to pull the shaft out, Ryan decided that he was going to tie his climbing gear to a halyard and lift the engine. Did it feel safe? Mm, not really. But did it take us less than five minutes to get the shaft out? Yeah. Okay, so the prop shaft is out through under the engine, I'm completely wet and Ryan as well. Ryan because he was sweating me because I was operating the winch under the pouring rain. Ah, we love boat work. And this, my friends, this is the shaft. Do you think that this is the reason why, like this? No. Is the reason why it was stuck? No. Okay. Okay, Facebook fans, Sophie's left me alone on the boat with a camera. And we all know how well that goes. So this is a Volvo uh, shaft seal. It's pretty standard and inside, it's got really two functions. Inside, you might be able to see here, inside are some seals, which keeps the water out while the shaft's going out. And then there's also a, a, some bearing piece in there, which is those graded lines you see. So what we need to do is insert this little rubber thing first in here. And the purpose of this is to protect the seals when we're placing uh, the shaft into this, okay? It's really sensitive to any burrs or anything cutting it. And if it does, it can damage the, the seal and it get water and stuff dripping in. So we've, we've inserted that. We put a little grease in there to help us out. Now the next thing is because the shaft, we had to pull it out in the inside of the boat because I couldn't get the coupling off and the, the coupling is a thing that attaches to the shaft uh, but also then attaches to the engine gearbox it's that guy right here so when I put this on it's not going to be going on uh, in the traditional way that the instructions were to say so I got to make sure I think it through but essentially shaft is going out of the boat from the engine this way uh, and this is the guy inside so I need to insert it well this way now the next thing we need to do is get this ready for installation and we're going to install this as soon as it stops raining because we need to lift the engine and pop it back in. It does say to avoid pinching of the, the piece that goes onto the boat that attaches. There's this metal plate and the idea here, what you don't want to have happen when you're buckling this down, that it pinches the, the rubber piece. So they want you to put this like metal plate in here, I guess. Okay, you can slowly start picking that one up. Okay, stop. Okay, more. Yep, more. Stop, stop, stop. All right, keep going. Okay, hold on. There we go. Okay, more, a little more. Uh, a little bit more. Okay, stop. Stop. Okay. 
Okay, uh, it's in. So now we need to lower the engine. So if you release the backup line first. Okay, is the backup off? Or the backup is off, yes. Okay, you can slowly lower the 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 primary one. Okay. Good. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. All right, stop. <laughs> Woo. Oh man, thanks guys. No problem. That was, uh, that was easy. <laughs> it was easy, so they say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next step of this is we need to remove this, which is the shaft bearing, sometimes called the cutlass bearing. Cutlass is the name brand for a brand of bearing. But you can see in here, like, uh, well, maybe you can't, yeah, there you go. Uh, some of the, how those are, and it allows a little bit of water to come in and then the shaft flows around that. So there were screws in that old one. These metal screws. I wish. It's actually a really big difference uh, to the old one. I thought the old one was. The old shaft really wiggled a little bit. This isn't moving at all, so maybe it was worse off than I thought, but it is uh, incredibly difficult to get in right now. So I think I maybe did this not the correct way. All right, so here's the deal. I think I made a boo-boo. So I don't think I can get, the cutlass bearing's really supposed to go in before the shaft goes in. I didn't really think that through. So I've asked Julie and Marcus to come back. We'll lift the engine, I'll pull the shaft out, put the cutlass bearing in, and <laughs> it's, a live, it's a live and learn process, really. Success! So it's on. Very little wiggle, uh, and it will have it will have even less wiggle once we get the rest of the shit attached. And that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do now. They say that sailing is fixing things in exotic locations. I can agree. Okay. So next thing I need to do is get the engine aligned with the coupling. So we can attach the coupling to the gearbox, but if the engine's a little bit off, the shaft's gonna wobble. So you might think it's aligned because you've tightened all the bolts down, but there could be a little small gap on one side because the engine's not level, level with the shaft. So it's really important that when we do this, uh, we, we align the engine with that. I have never done that before. <laughs> But what I did do is I marked where the new mounts were and then I mar marked their height. So what I'm gonna do is lower the engine to that height and get it close. So we're then gonna butt the coupling from the shaft to the coupling on the gearbox, get that really tight, somewhat tight, and then we're gonna use some feeler gauges. Uh, and then I'm also going to attach the stern seal. Couplings here, gearbox is here. So I'm gonna put, put the bolts in and I'm not gonna completely tighten it but I'm gonna get it close, and you can see there's a gap here. The gap's maybe a bit bigger than it is here, and there's a few reasons why. One is, is I don't have the stern seal on, so I'm gonna just put that in the back. I'll show you. It's gonna help hold the shaft where it needs to go. We'll start playing with the screws and getting it close, at least. The thing is, while I'm sitting here on the hard, I'm only gonna get it relatively close, because when we go back in the water, the shape of the boat is gonna change a little bit, so the water's gonna push on the hull differently, than what the stands and the keel is pushing on the hull now, and that's going to change how the engine is mounted. So we're gonna get it close because when we get back in the water, we're gonna have to do it again. I think I got it. Now, we're gonna put a little grease around here. All right, I'm gonna try to show you how I'm doing the leveling here. So it's really difficult to see on the camera, but the shaft is pretty much in line. But you can see the shaft here is just a little bit lower than the entire block. I and mean, then if I look at the gap, I can just look at it right now. I can tell that the gap on the bottom 
is much greater than the gap on the top. So what I need to do is lower the entire engine down a ways to get these two level, and then I'll need to lower the front mounts just a little bit more to try to get that square. So I'm gonna do that right now. Just another day in paradise On my sailboat, it's paradise I think I'm getting a bit close, so it's really just an adjustment of the different mounts and then using these feeler gauges. Mine are really rusty, so I use this thicker one. I'm not sure you can actually see that. And then there's a second one here. So I just take this feeler, and you see I can slide it in here. But when I get around here, so just about here, down the bottom I can't. And then if we go over here, same thing. So we need to either lower the bottom mounts a bit, maybe a little bit farther on this side, yeah. So we'll probably need to raise the port front one a little bit, and it should, should be good. Okay guys, I just told Marcus here that I'll be done with this in 10 or 15 minutes, so let's see if that actually happens. Okay, now we just need to get the anode for it, which I think I have upstairs. Boom, it's amazing. This thing, the old one did wiggle a bit, and this one is just rock solid, so. I think we made a good move by uh, fixing this all up. I think by cleaning out some parts of the engine and doing a service to we'll get a few more horsepower out of it. Uh, that'd be great. Hopefully that doesn't fall off. So that's it guys, that's another completed project. Well, almost. What we did was we changed the engine mounts, we took the shaft out, cleaned it up, took the propeller off, cleaned it up, changed the cutlass bearing, changed the stern seal, and added new anodes. If I were to do it again, I would do a few things differently. I'd get a few more heavy duty tools, like some better gear pullers and some bigger wrenches and things. Uh, the other thing that didn't work is I put the shaft in before I put the cutlass bearing in, which was not a good idea, it doesn't work. <laughs> So I had to take the shaft out, put the cutlass bearing in. The other thing was we changed the engine mounts without lifting the engine and that worked. But the problem was we ended up lifting the engine anyways to get the shaft out because it could get the coupling off. So that was a little bit of a thing, but it was a learning process and ended up working good. The only thing we have left to do is to make sure the engine is aligned. So it's, I've aligned it as best I can on land. When it goes back in the water, we'll need to do it again. And then because it's my first time, I'm thinking about hiring professionals just to come and check my work to make sure it's all aligned. Because if it's not, it can damage all the bearings pretty quickly. Make sure if you do it yourself, you plan a few days to do it. It did take us probably total like three or four days to get all this done because we need to get tools and some things like the propeller just didn't come off. But um, so schedule a few days. But overall, I'm happy we did it. Learned a lot. Good luck when you're trying it. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel and what we do, please hit the subscribe button above. So the next projects we got coming is we're gonna do the anti-fouling on the boat with the new silicon anti-fouling. I'm quite excited about that. And we're dropping the rudder to replace the rudder bearings. So these are what we're coming up and hopefully in the next week or two, we'll get those done and we'll splash polar seal. So until next time, bye bye. Looking good. <laughs> Anybody who wants to start a YouTube channel needs to remember that it is a lot of work. Uh, probably not. Can you see me? You, be, you really become a master of many tricks when you do this. Sophie's watching on her computer and editing and going, oh my gosh, my boyfriend can fix anything, but he can't film. Sophie's gonna be really proud of me because I lightened up the picture. Okay, I think I have to do that all over again because I've noticed that the frame rate, which is what I screwed up the last time, it's all messed up. Well, shies. Bye, guys!